morning. I'm Bruce Morrison. I'm your teaching artist again with Meadow Arts Alliance here in Twist, Washington. And today, uh, for our little art activity, uh, I thought we'd do some animal tracks. Um, I, I tried some like this, and we're going to use our, our fingerprints to make these. Um, some, some bunny tracks, some wolf dog or coyote tracks, and some bobcat or mountain lion or lynx tracks. There's a sum. Okay, so all we're going to need is uh, your paint set, some water, and a brush. Uh, it's, our materials, materials are pretty simple today. So get those together and we'll get back and paint some tracks. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's start with some, um, our wild cat tracks. Actually, they could be your house cat too because they're all, cats are pretty close together. I'm gonna show you these pictures real quick. Um, the mountain lion, the lynx and the bobcat. Notice that they're, they're pretty similar. They just vary in size. The lynx have a lot more fur on their feet, and so there's kind of an area around them. But you're, if you look at your, um, if you have a cat uh, and it's walking in the snow, you'll see them very similar to the bobcat tracks. I actually was tracking a bobcat um, the other day, and. Uh, they, uh, they spread their feet when, when they're in deep snow to make their feet even bigger. So my little, um, how I'd like to do this is with your watercolors, and I'm going to say choose any color. We could do brown or black, but it'd be kind of fun to use, uh, let's say, orange, okay? Just because um, it's a nice bright color. So. Go ahead and uh, work up a little orange in your pan and then paint above it. Transfer some paint up there. Maybe use some more water. Get, get enough there so we can make some little paw prints from it. We're going to use our finger pr fingertips to make little fingerprints that'll um, add up to be a, a bobcat track. So got my finger and I'm going to dip it in the, the paint and what I've learned about uh, the, the cat tracks, you can see it in, I did a sample here. Um, I use two prints side by side to make what's called the pad. Before I make the toes, I make the pad and there are two prints side by side and then three prints below that to make this pad shape. That's kind of like what you see in the, the picture. Okay? And then I do the four toes. The cats show four toes. So I've got, got my paint, and I'll do one, two little prints, and I find I, I need to go back and get more paint all the time. So two prints, and then I'm below one, two, three. And that is kind of like the pad. I could touch it up maybe. Okay. And then around that, there are four toes. There are two in front. You have to, I, I have to go back and get more paint frequently. There are two on the side. And depending on, on how big your fingers are, um, that could be either a, a bobcat. This is about the size of a bobcat track. And uh, <clears throat> if you had, if you're using your thumb, it would be about the size of a mountain lion. If you used your little pinky, let's try that. It would be the size of a house cat. Let's make one over here. One, two, to make our pad, and then three below it, one, two, three, to make our little pad shape. And I'm gonna to have to rob a little more paint to get 
the toes. One, two, three, four. And if they're a little crooked or something like mine is, that's okay. The one thing about animals, they never look back to see how their tracks look. So, uh, but you can see how, well here, I, uh, I might even try a big one to look at like a mountain lion track. I'm gonna try making one with my thumb. I have not tried this before, but it, I can't resist. Let's try and make a mountain lion. I need a lot of paint to do that. Okay, I'll try my right thumb. So I'll do the one. Boy, these are big ones. Making the pad, two. Kind of hard to get my whole hand down there. One. Two. Three for his pad. I'm going to touch that up a little bit. And then I need some more paint if I'm going to make the toes for the mountain lion. Mountain lions are big. They're actually the size, a big mountain lion will have a track the size of my hand. I've seen them a couple times and they're huge. One, two, they're four, uh, four toes on the mountain lion track. So you can see how you can use your different, <clears throat> the different size of your fingertips from the pinky to the uh, index finger to the thumb to make these different size animals. And um, you can change them to be more like dog tracks. The main difference between dog tracks and uh, cat tracks is cats have retractable claws that, that, that usually don't show in their tracks. But dogs, the claws on the dog don't pull back in and so th they show. I'm going to add some claws to these so we can see how that would look. If it was a, a small uh, animal like a fox or maybe even your own uh, small dog, they would have little claws like this. Kinda. And if it was a coyote, it would be about this size. And if it was a wolf, it would be like this. Wolves have big claws. Actually, the wolf would probably be even bigger than what, I'm, what I've got here. Wolf tracks are, are huge. It's not very likely you'll see a wolf, but there are a few out there. Okay, so there's some dog tracks. And um, <clears throat> wash your brush out and we'll get ready and uh, we'll try some bunny tracks next. Alrighty, so we're going to try some rabbit tracks. And um, down in the low country, most of the rabbits are uh, little cottontails. But up in the high mountain woods, it's the snowshoe hares. Um, and the snowshoes, snowshoe hares are adapted to deep snow by having huge back feet. And um, so when we're up skiing, uh, we find the, those snowshoe hare tracks in the, um, in the lodgepole pine forest up in the, in the deep snow there. Now one thing about snowshoe hares and rabbits as in general is I've I made some little samples here. They actually land with their back feet, they flip their back feet forward and land with their back feet ahead and, and their, their front feet come down behind. So when you see rabbit tracks, they usually look like this. Those are the back feet, the big ones are the back feet. And there's smaller ones that are actually the front feet that make marks behind the back feet. So we'll try that, okay? And I'm gonna use some purple here. Just 
just because it's a nice color. And again, I'll, I'll work it up to uh, get enough purple paint to give me plenty to work from up here in the pan. Okay. So, um, there, if, if, if the snow is shallow, you, would, they, you might be able to see their toes like this. It was my attempt at showing their toes. They actually even show their little claws too. But most of the time, we'll just see the, the broader marks that they make in the snow without showing the toes. So let's try that, okay? In order to do that, we'll dip our fingers and um, these, are the, these are those big front tracks. We'll do those, I mean, big back rear foot tracks that show up in front. And I pull, pull my finger down to make a, a long mark and make it a little wider in the front, maybe narrower in the back. That's a good one. Try that again. Make sure it's nice and wide in front and then pull it back. Pretty good. So that would be their, their back feet flipping forward and landing first. And behind them, that are kind of staggered, they're smaller tracks of their front feet that come down, bunk, bunk, behind them. And they'll jump a long way. So the one that it would have made before would be down here. Broaden the front, pull it back. Broaden the front. And get some more paint and pull it back. Touch that one up like that. And then the little front tracks that uh, land behind the, the they're, they're usually a little bit off center like that. And that would be the marks that the bunny makes when it goes through the snow. So that's, um, that's our little snowshoe hair track or rabbit track. And you can recognize when you see tracks that, that have that pattern to them, you'll know that a rabbit has hopped through the snow. We'll do one more track before we're done. But um, while I'm cleaning up, um, you go, go ahead and rinse your brush out, clean your finger, and we'll get ready for our next track. Okay, uh, let's try, this is a messy one, and you might get approval before you do, do this one because you're going to have to paint the whole side of your hand to make this print. Um, what we're going to do is make bare tracks. Here's, here's some that I made before, and here's some, some pictures of what bear tracks look like. And um, depending, grizzly bear tracks, which we don't have many of, have really long claws. Our black bears have, have shorter claws, thank goodness. Um, and so this is, this is our little uh, painting tracking adventure. I'm going to use just brown because it's a good bear color for this one. And I'm going to work up some, um, some brown paint for this, these tracks. And this time I'm not going to paint in the pan. Instead, I'm going to paint, I'm going to make a fist like this, and paint the side of my fist. Splattering a little bit. It's, this is the messy one. When, I, when I've covered that whole side of my fist, I'm ready to make my bear track. Okay, so Pick it up. Mm, yeah, I'm going to paint it one more time and put it down one more time and make sure I've got it over here. Yeah, that's pretty good. The, a bear track shows, this track shows the whole, whole uh, sole of the foot making a track. Oftentimes, you'll see more like like I have here, a little bit of the arch, not, not making a track. But then, um, then it's time to use your finger again. And bears are a little different than the, than the cat tracks. 
uh, because they show five toes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we'll go one, two, three, four, five. That's not a bad bear track. Um, if the snow was deep, you'd probably just see a big, big hollow in the snow, but this is more what they'd look like in shallow snow or even mud. But then the, the claw marks are important, okay? I'm just going to make some big claws. So, if, um, if you see bear tracks, um, one thing about bears is most of the time you don't see bear tracks in winter. You know why? Because they're sleeping. They hibernate in the winter. And um, you could, we could do a, a front bear track. If you look at the front, front paw, um, they have a, a smaller, they just have this front part. So I'm going to paint my, my hand, but I'm not going to paint the back of it. I'm just going to paint the front because that's the only part that shows on the front bear, bear track. Well, we got some of that, but close enough. And let's see. The toes, one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five toes, and the claws. Long claws. Already. Okay. Well, good luck finding your, uh, painting your tracks, and hopefully you can, uh, you'll get a chance to get out in the woods in the winter and find some tracks of your own. Thanks for painting with us today.